There's so many variables that it's impossible to be like, this is the best one, this is the second best one, this is the third best one. So I figured the best way to do this to sort of generalize it into a tier system is like, okay, what's the general thing most people care about? What's up guys, Derek, moreplates.com. Today we are going to be talking about um, the uh, tier system. This is a highly requested topic. Um, everyone keeps saying like day fucking 57, I'm asking Derek to do a anabolics tier list. <laughs> and it's like, I've answered the comment section numerous times saying how there is no tier system, but people still really wanna see it and they think that it's gonna get picked up by the algorithm really badly and think it's a great idea. So let's see what happens guys. So here we are talking about it. So as far as a tier system, I gotta tell you straight up what I told you guys who commented this on the other video. First of all, like here's the anabolic steroid family tree. We have uh, testosterone is the root androgen that all of the anabolics are derived from in a direct way or an indirect way. So obviously testosterone at the head of the family. And then underneath that you have testosterone derivatives. So synthetic anabolic agents that are derived from the testosterone molecule. Yeah, above and beyond that, testosterone 5-alpha reduces into something called dihydrotestosterone. You probably already know that. So DHT is a metabolite hormone of the root androgen testosterone. Now that DHT molecule can then be, you know, twisted and turned and fucking manipulated to create these synthetic anabolic agents that are derived from DHT, which are known as the DHT derivatives. And then in the last subfamily of the family tree, we have 19 nortestosterone, which is also known as nandrolone, which is also known as by the, uh, you know, the bro terms, you know, like DECA, even though that's an ester, but you guys know what I mean by now, hopefully. So anyways, testosterone is the root androgen, and then that in the biosynthesis of estrogens in the body creates a certain amount of endogenous nandrolone, and that nandrolone molecule twist and turn manipulated to create 19 nor testosterone derivatives, and then obviously the parent compound of that family tree is nandrolone itself, more commonly known as nandrolone decanoate with the decanoate ester, nandrolone phenylpropionate with the NPP ester, etc. So of these families, we have DHT derivatives, testosterone derivatives, 19 nor testosterone derivatives. So how do you know, how would you put these on a tier system? Well, like if we're talking about like tier A, like the best ones, tier B, like the second best ones, tier C, like a little like worse than B, but like you're close to the worst, but not the worst. D, the worst ones, like whatever. There's no way to really do that because they all have their own inherent positives and negatives. It's like which thing is most useful for whatever you're trying to do. If you're an athlete, what is your sport of choice? What is it that you're trying to do? What kind of performance vectors are we trying to leverage here? Are we trying to drive up body weight? Are we trying to drive up strength acutely without increasing body weight? Are we trying to increase endurance with increasing your body weight as minimally as possible? Or are we trying to antagonize estrogen because you're too fat and you also need something else. <laughs> like something that is otherwise a tier, like shitty tier, could otherwise be a top tier compound for somebody else, depending on what their sport is, what they're being tested for, what kind of uh, you know goals they have specifically, what their health profile looks like and what could they get away with using, which things are they prone to sides from. Like there's so many variables that it's impossible to be like, this is the best one, this is the second best one, this is the third best one. So I figured the best way to do this to sort of generalize it into a tier system is like, okay, what's the general thing most people care about? Bodybuilding. So what kind of tier system would you have for each column based on, and I kind of already did this video to be honest guys, like I did the uh, bodybuilder versus power lifter steroid cycles and I kind of broke down how they would differ traditionally, you know, like what a lot of uh, bodybuilders would kind of prefer in terms of their off season for building muscle. So that's basically what this is gonna be summarized as is what is kind of the tier system for a bodybuilder in an off season, off season that's trying to gain as much muscle as possible with the least deleterious outcomes to their health. You know, what's the most overall effective choices? Well, obviously when we look at the test base, we need something that's a substrate for aromatase. Now, common knowledge would have you believe that all of these compounds, because they're derived from testosterone are substrates for aromatase and have some sort of estrogenic component that can fulfill that backbone of a test base, which is in fact not true. In fact, there's only two compounds in this entire section that you can really use as a base, and that would be testosterone as well as dianable. EQ, unfortunately, is not something that provides sufficient estrogen production. In fact, it seems to be quite anti-estrogenic in actual practical application. Perhaps as a base 
on its own, it could be pushed up high enough to have a significant amount of estrogen receptor activation to some extent, but it's like the burden of androgen on your system relative to the minor amount of whatever metabolite estrogen this produces does not seem to be good enough. Like at least with d we can see the estrogenic side effects when you compound it with testosterone. When you have more, you end up with gynecomastia, you end up with flagship obvious estrogenic burden symptoms. With EQ though, when you stack it with testosterone, for example, you literally see that all of a sudden a, a dose of tea that you otherwise would have needed an AI to run or otherwise would have been intolerable without getting gynecomastia, all of a sudden you have like low E sides, even though you're on a high dose of tea. So this compound, unfortunately, is quite a bit different than Dianabol in practical application, despite the fact that chemically they look fucking, it's like pretty much the same drug almost. Um, obviously not in practical application and obviously one is oral and one is injectable, but you know what I mean? Like chemically they're very similar to one another. So as far as the test base, it's kind of like, well, if you're a bodybuilder in the off season and you're trying to gain muscle, what is the tier system? Well, what's the most conducive thing to providing adequate, you know, neuro protection, cardio protection, hitting the base physiologic functions that a base androgen would do without overburdening your system with estrogen. But in addition to that, also not inhibiting one of the main things that's going to determine if you grow or not, which is your appetite. So are we going to use something that's liver toxic and is going to blunt your appetite versus testosterone itself for the base? Like almost nobody is going to be using D-ball as their base. Like, yeah, it could be done theoretically and it has been done many times and the golden era guys certainly did use it, you know, and it certainly works. However, is it the most ideal choice in a tier system Probably not. You probably look at the compound that your body actually produces and knows exactly what to do with and is quite good at using, <laughs> you know? So that would be testosterone. That is like the A of the tier list. And then after that, you would have, I guess, Dianabol is B. And then after that, all the rest of them are fucking useless as test basis, unfortunately. You know, there's other compounds in this family. I just like, these are the main ones that most people will look at. So that's kind of like why I'm discussing these ones specifically. But obviously there are a lot of other testosterone derivatives and perhaps ones that are viable uh, alternative test bases. But in general, you know, this is it. And obviously you can look at things like actual bioidentical estradiol on its own, um, high dose DHEA, HCG. Like there's a lot of things that can act as that estrogen component but we're looking at the actual family tree here, not like things that are outside of each of these three families. So anyways, now we look at the DHT column. So what is the most, what is the A, the A tier of DHT derivatives for bodybuilders? Well, frankly, it's probably the most refined agent on this list, which would be Primabol. And that seems to be the most well tolerated compound clinically, as well as in practical app application. It seems to be one of the cleanest, least deleterious to your health markers. It's not so anti-estrogenic that it's going to be problematic in a, you know, uh, inhibiting estrogen to an excessive degree. However, obviously in certain individuals though, maybe you have excessive aromatization. Maybe you need more of that anti-estrogenic component where a master on might make more sense. Is it going to be the most conducive for your hair? No, but that's above, above and beyond the scope of this video. We're just talking about overall tier system, like effectiveness wise, relative to health wise. So now Anivar, obviously a really refined agent as well. However, it's oral. Do we want to be burdening our kidneys more unnecessarily than we need to be? And interesting, the reason I say that is interestingly enough, Anivar is mainly metabolized not through the same traditional way that or other oral 17 alpha alkylated oral steroids are. So um, that's why I said that. Now, as far as uh, Anadrol, is that, you know, one of the most uh, tissue selective compounds you could use that otherwise is like clean on your blood work? Honestly, it's actually pretty tissue selective at low enough dosages and most people are just overdoing it. However, it's oral. It's gonna crush your appetite or it can crush your appetite. It's not, uh, it's a lot more liver toxic than some of these injectable alternatives. So it's probably not part of the, you know, A list, I guess. Winstrol, same shit. Are we gonna dry out our joints in the off season when we're trying to build muscle and gain strength? Like probably not. Proviron, do we really need to bind up SHBG when we already are using a super physiological dose of androgens that's crushing SHBG into the ground? Like probably not. So Proviron, probably not that useful unless you are cycling and you were just starting TRT or you're just starting testosterone and you just have like a clinically high SHBG and you're using it transiently to sort of like bring things into a more optimal range until your body kind of readjusts. Super draw, is this conducive to an off season? Not really. Um, it's going to kill your appetite, super liver toxic, not uh, significantly skew your biomarkers, not the best thing. DHB, an exotic compound that has a lot of hype behind it, but I don't think it's as safe 
nearly as safe as a Masteron and Prima Bolin personally. So I think like as far as the A-list goes from the bodybuilder perspective, it would either be probably like Primo and then maybe Masteron thereafter. And this is going to be depending on your estrogenic burden and kind of how much antagonism you need of estrogen induced RNA transcription at the receptor site and or aromatase competition or whatever the fuck is going on. Um, and just other processes in the body, like how much uh, antagonism do you need and what is the ideal compound for your like pure protein expression that you need from this column. Now, if we go to the 19 nors, what is the A of all of these? Well, I don't really know, to be honest, and I'll certainly tell you it's not check drops and it's not, I don't think it's methyl trianolone though either. These are compounds that seem to be acutely used for like very sporadic, uh, you know, performance out outcomes. Trenbolone, certainly not something I would, even though it's very effective, I wouldn't put it in the A list because it's not very tolerable by the majority of individuals and seems to be one of the most deleterious to your health. Trestolone also does not seem to be, uh, I think it needs more research. I think a lot of the uh, use of it anecdotally is using dosages that make absolutely no sense when you actually look at the literature and how many milligrams you actually need to replace like a base amount of therapeutic testosterone. I think people are way overdoing the Trestolone and I think that is probably not the ideal 19 nor to really drive volume, which is probably what you're doing if you're in this column to begin with, unless you're pre-contest and using Trembolone or something. So for me, the A-list would be, you know, Nandrolone probably. And then I guess maybe there's some compounds like Steranabol, which apparently are like the Prima Bolin of 19 nors, which I have never used. And I don't know anybody who's used it who can have a accurate you know feedback on if it's going to be superior to other other compounds. It's not like there's any clinical literature to reference on it either. So it's certainly possible that Steranabol could be the A-list with Nandrolone as the B, but frankly, we have all of the clinical research and human trials and fucking all of our data that we can derive safety models from is based on Nandrolone. And we can see it's pretty fucking well tolerated and it works extremely well. So it's like, are we going to choose Steranabol just because we know it was potentially a more refined agent or are we gonna go with what's tried and true and we know what to expect predictably, which is Nandrolone. So like for me, I would probably assert that Nandrolone just based on the evidence we have provided up to now is probably at the A tier and then the B tier, I guess, is kind of a fucking toss up, dude. Like, I don't know. Um, there's other compounds too, like, uh, I forgot what they're called, to be honest. There's a lot of different random ones that sort of came out at the tail end of, um, like, uh, the pharmaceutical companies trying to produce the most, uh, produce better, more tissue selective refined agents, but none of them really hit mainstream. So, and a lot of UGLs never carry it. So it's not like a lot of us have had experience with them. So anyways, I would probably assert that Nandrolone is the A tier of this tier list and then you know, I, way down at the bottom is probably things that are just used for like acute performance that you otherwise would not really leverage consistently in an off season. So that's the tier system, dude. Like hopefully, <laughs> I think that was satisfactory. Like I actually attempted to break it down based on an actual specific outcome. And again, though, this is going to be individual specific. Some people may respond horribly to one of these drugs. It's not like every single person gets the exact same anti antibiotic for the exact same thing. You know, there's a reason there is different drugs for like similar purposes. And the same goes for anabolics. It's not like you're going to respond exactly the same to Prima Bull as the next guy. And it means that absolutely no way is another compound potentially better for you. So you have to keep this in mind. But just in general, that is the sort of tier system. And let's see if indeed this gets picked up by the algorithm as was suggested by the day, you know, 77 of asking for a tier system guy who comments on all the videos. So anyways, take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplace underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchy, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, including my TRT clinic. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. My recommended lab test panels that I designed myself. Gorilla Mind, nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas I designed myself from scratch and anything else I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.